we're going to take a little break this week, sort of, kind of, and go down a rabbit trail, because I believe it's that important. And the reason we're doing Genesis in the first place is we want to get a good foundation so that we can understand the rest of the Bible. And uh, we are on chapter 6, but the first verses of chapter 6 talk about something that there's a lot of controversy over, and we want to go through it tonight and see what we think about it. And the reason it's important is uh, we're going to go to Luke 17, 26 through 30 first. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they brought, bought, and they sold, and they planted, and they built, but on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. So... Even so, it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now, up until this time, we've had the fall of Adam and Eve, and we've gone through the genealogy of the people. Cain and Abel were murdered, or Cain murdered Abel, and there was evil, and they were fallen, and there was sin. But what made Noah have to build an ark? What made God say, I'm done with human race? Because if sin and violence is all there is to make the days of Noah, then we're all doomed anyway. In other words, what what happened to make it so bad that God said, I'm going to kill them all? If, if we look at stuff like just today, how evil does it have to be before he says, I've had it with them? Is it worse, is it worse now than it was worse back then? Exactly. So yeah. what, what, is, that way. what changed at the time of Genesis 6, verse 1, which we're fixing to read, what changed to make it that bad? All right, we're going to look at Genesis 6-1, and we're going to look at it again next week, but I wanted to get the sons of God out of the way because there seems to be confusion to some people. And to me, it's plain as day, but other people resist it for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, Genesis 6-1, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, but he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward. If you'll notice, I've underlined also afterward. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they, were, they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Now, it starts that verse off, 6 4, says there were giants on the earth in those days. I think that he is inferring that the sons of God going into the daughters of men caused nothing. That's the way I took it when I first read it. But after a few years, taking it for granted that that's what it meant, people would say, oh no. These were, it says, mighty men were of old and men of renown. Well, if you're 13 foot tall and a pretty bad guy, you would probably be known all over. I believe the sons of God were the fallen angels. But the other view is the Sethite view. We went back to uh, Genesis 4.26 and we saw that the, the word the the word for began to call upon the name of the Lord was misinterpreted, I believe, to say it should have said they began to profane and defile the name of the Lord at that time. Well this is what we're going to get to. I want to get this kind of straight in our minds because as we read through the Bible, we're going to find that the only way to be a son of God is to be created by God. So if God doesn't have anything to do with your creation, you're the Son of Man. Okay, so we need to understand what a son of God is all the way through the Bible. And this being the cause of the flood. Now I'm not saying, I, I don't know if Seth is good or bad. 
I don't know if Enos was good or bad, but it says in the days of Enos, they started calling upon the name of the Lord. Yes. I'm like, well, we know now that it was defiling the name of the Lord. So there was no idol worship or no defiling until Enos. Uh, here we are in six one, and it talks about giants in the land and, and sons of God taking the women. And the next thing is Noah. I mean, it's like, so he's telling you this is the cause. Bing, bing, bing. It's right down the line. We try to make it too complicated and say, I wonder why. I'm like, well, you just got to tell me. Most of the time, when, when you follow, whenever you have a question, go a few verses up, maybe a chapter. And then read through that through the next chapter. Wonder, and it will put it together. I wonder if it was giant men, if there's any reason why there couldn't have been giant animals. Exactly. That, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well that's, that's my theory. These are kinds of things I can't prove scripturally. Right. But I believe that the sons of God altered the DNA of the people. We are made in God's image. We have to go back to Genesis 1. And you will reproduce in your own kind... Okay, they had the ability to shuffle DNA, and what they did, I think, uh, we can do it today. Actually, there's GBA GBH dash eight. There's a gene that they can alter in a mouse, and it'll be as big as a guinea pig, is which is like seven or eight Jones times bigger. Jones. There is a condition for some people where they get extra tall, but they get weak. You'll see people with spindly legs and they're they weak and they get to 39 years old and die. Oh wow! But, but these guys are beefy, football playing linebacker types. Yeah. You know, like Goliath. Yeah. Like Goliath, Goliath. Goliath. exactly, Goliath, yeah. exactly. And, and that's why I wanted to add in and also afterward, okay? Because I wanted you to know the flood wiped out everything on the earth, but somehow or another it got through. And we'll talk about that in a minute. I believe that what they did is they uh, now this is through stuff that's not accepted scripture. The book of Enoch is accepted in Ethiopian uh, Christianity Ethiopian Judaism and the Eastern Orthodox Church their Bibles have the book of Enoch in it. Yeah. And we know that Jude read the book of Enoch and believe it because he quoted it in Jude. He quoted the book of Enoch. And he talked about the angels. Well, if you read the book of Enoch, it talks about these angels doing this, and they taught the women sorcery, the occult, uh, spells, and things that they shouldn't have been messing with. Right. Okay? There is a belief that they altered DNA. Let's, I'm, I hate to get filthy in front of people. <laughs> But let's just say that a human mated with a chimpanzee. Yeah. That you won't get a human chimpanzee cross. It won't happen. Let's say uh, they mated with a sheep. You're not going to get a baby from that. Well, these guys were able to mix the DNA somehow or another. And that's how they genetically altered God's image. We are in God's image. They corrupted the flesh of the earth. Now, it's not a big stretch to say they took a lizard and made it a dinosaur. Right. Now, that's speculation on my part. I, you know. Well, we, we, we know we have pigs with human hearts because they will slaughter a pig and transplant that heart into a human and won't reject it. Right. So there's all kinds of things that they're working on and they've already done it. And we know that there's money out there to study it and things that we're doing it. And we know about stem cell research, and we know about all this stuff going on. They're growing what they want to grow. Now, having said all that, all we know is that somehow or another, the image of God was corrupted. And God said, I'm done with it. you got 120 years, and I'm killing you all. So then we get into the story of Noah. So let's just move on. I, like I said, we're going to go through over this again next week, but I want to go on with the sons of God. Let's see... Uh, Determining who the sons of God refers to is absolutely consequential in the understanding, the plan of God, and why God does what He does throughout the Bible. Making a mistake here changes everything and confuses our understanding of what God is doing in history. Uh, there are two basic theories for who these sons are. 
There could be a few more, but basically follow the main two ideas with minor changes. The view put forth today in the Christian world is the sons of sons described in Genesis 6 were descendants of Seth. They're described as pious race descended from Seth by the daughters of men. The daughters of Cain are worldly men. It doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible that these are the daughters of Cain. In fact, it says the daughters of Adama, which is mankind. You know, it didn't have to be Adam, but it was the daughters of mankind. When he said all flesh is corrupted, Noah was the only one. Yeah, he's talking about animals too. Yeah. Right. So we're going to get we're going to get there, and I don't want to get too far out and crazy, but look at some of the pictures on the wall in Egypt and places like that. They'll have a a lion's head, a man's head on a lion's body, right. all kind of stuff. I'm not saying this is true. I'm not saying any of that. But for some reason, there's pictures all over. A man on a horse's body. Yeah, and they and they have we call it mythology, but who's to say that there wasn't pre-flood something similar to that? I don't know. I'm not saying don't. Know. And that could be why we got the earth got destroyed. But we also have pottery with dinosaurs on it. How could we know? what a dinosaur looks like if we had never dug up a bone. There's no record of any bones of anything Unless before. Unless you're caves with dinosaurs on them. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They have, there are several places that no one can explain how they knew what a dinosaur looked like. Right. If they dug it up, it'd be a pile of bones. Right. They couldn't, but I mean, they got the triceratops with the three yeah. horns, they got it all, they got the stegosaurus with the plates on it mm -hmm. and everything. And so they actually, these humans would have had to have seen the actual animal. I believe they walk with. I, I do too. Yeah. That's why I believe in a young earth. All this stuff, they can talk about carbon-14 all they want to, but I just don't think it goes back that far. Okay. No way. God brought the animals to the ark. Not, Noah didn't have to go around them up. Right. They came to the ark, and they went into the ark, and Noah just had to operate, you know, yeah. the ark. So he didn't bring the dinosaurs for some reason. No, he didn't. He didn't want them. Mm -hmm. And see, people, people say, well, what about the dinosaurs? The unbelievers will say, what about the dinosaurs? I'm like, that's why he killed them. Well, some of the stories of the, all the dinosaurs <laughs> bones that they've been finding has been in high top mountains. Mm -hmm. So that would indicate to me that as the flood was coming, they all went to higher ground. Maybe so. Could be. It, uh, I mean, Montana and up in there is a lot of bones. Yeah. Idaho. Okay, so, much of this idea came from the interpretation of Genesis 4.26. We talked about that before. Um... As we explored chapter 4, we talked about the translation error, changing profane or defiled the name of God into called upon the name of God. We are given the idea that Seth and his son were a significant moment in history that required God to record it in a verse. Changing one word changes the meaning dramatically. There was some sort of change here, but we must know more about it to understand what changed. Up until the 5th century, now this is the Sethite view, up until the 5th century, the interpretation of Genesis, it was fallen angels mated with daughters of men to produce monsters. As we know back in Genesis 1.26, we were created in God's image and in His likeness. The introduction of the fallen angel seed corrupted the image of God had created. If you remember, everything had to, be, had to reproduce its own kind. Genesis 6.12, So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. There's a book and a movie, both, and it's called uh, uh, Corruption of the Image. And this guy goes through all of this. And he explains that God made us, and then we messed it up. And so he killed us, you know. And it's not natural. What, in other words, we talked about, and it was good, means that's the will of God. And it's not good means it's not in the will of God. So he decided that we weren't good. And so he wiped us out. Now, uh, all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So he says, I will destroy them with the earth. Now he's talking to Noah. In verse 12, God was complaining that all flesh had been corrupted. The Hebrew word for flesh here is literally skin or meat. So when we talk about all flesh, he said, well, that means everybody. 
No, it means their flesh was messed up. There is a difference between what God created and what we had become. Right. I don't know what that is, but it was corrupted. Corrupted the flesh. It says the Hebrew for corrupt means to corrupt, destroy, ruin, or spoil. The literal flesh of men was corrupted or spoiled. In today's language, we might suspect human DNA might have been changed by the mating of these angels with humans. We must always keep in mind the original challenge to Satan that the seed of the woman would destroy him. It would make sense for Satan to spoil men so that they could never come against him. So he's trying to spoil the seed of the woman. So he doesn't care about what man turns out to be because if there's nobody to mate with the woman, right. the seed of the woman will never come against him. Okay? And of course he went he used murder all throughout the Bible to murder the line going to Jesus. Okay? Now let's look at the verses immediately before and after the sons of God and the corruption of the flesh. They're talking about Noah and the flood. God had drawn a line, so to speak, and was going to destroy the whole earth. If Seth and Enos started a new trend of the following of following God, it must have failed miserably for God to destroy everything and everyone he had created. So they didn't make it through the flood. Uh, Seth died early and I suppose Enos died in the flood. So where did the idea come from that Seth was a God-fearing, pious man? Uh, where did the idea come from that he was pious? Before the Middle Ages, there were centuries of understanding of the angel view by the ancient rabbinical sources as well as the Septuagint translators and the early church fathers. But this view of Genesis 6 became embarrassing to the church in the 5th century A.D., they wanted to eliminate it from the fo for the following reasons. Angel worship had begun in the church. Okay? Now remember, this is the 5th century A.D. So that's 400 and some odd years. A.D., after Christ, that they wanted to change it. Who did it? The Catholics. Okay? So here's a Pope, again. You know, they changed the days and the holidays and all that, and now they're going to change the meaning of the Bible. Celibacy had just been institutionalized by the church, and the angel view was feared to impact these views. Celis and Julian the Apostate had begun to use the angel view to attack Christianity. Because of this, Julius Africanus sought more comfortable ground and resorted to the Sethite view. Cyril of Alexandria and Augustine followed, and the theory prevailed during the Middle Ages. Still today, many churches find the angel view too disturbing to admit. Most people have a, a, a complaint that angels don't mate. If you look in the Bible, you won't find a female angel. Okay? So they're saying that they don't have sex organs. And I said, we don't know that. Exactly. They don't have nothing to mate with. But let's just say that they don't. What I'm saying is when they left heaven, came to earth, they went into men. Well, Satan says that uh, when we go to heaven, we'll be neither male nor female. Exactly. Right. So that's why they get the assumption that the angels who are in heaven are. Right. Well, God cast out the angels. And when they came to earth, they had fleshly lusts. Now, I believe that, that, that a physical angel can mate. So this guy, Alex, uh, Augustine, is the one that hung on to the Sethite view. Okay. Up until this time, the angel view was the accepted view. The Hebrew and rabbi sages had interpreted the angel view from millennia. It took a pope in the 5th century to change this view. Even today in Protestant seminary, the Sethite view is generally what is taught. To believe the Sethite view, you have to believe the mating of two normal human beings produces giants that are so evil that the earth must be destroyed. Now, I know this for a fact because a man that I dearly love, and he's a preacher uh, in the church, and he is a smart, I, I can't tell you how smart he is. He is, knows the Bible front and back. And we got an argument about it. <laughs> and he says, no, no, no. It's the sons of Seth. But he had been to seminary. And he took what they taught him. And he is Baptist as they come. And it's, it's not a matter of being a Catholic or a Baptist or a Protestant or a Lutheran or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's this thing has gone on forever. 
as a break off of the Catholic Church, the teaching was that Seth, Seth's descendants were the ones going into the daughters of men. Another objection, here we go, to the Sethite believers state is angels don't procreate. They're going to use this verse on you right here. Have babies. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Tell them I'm a beginner. <laughs> no, uh, well, a person at uh, Fellowship argued with her till the cows went on. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't argue because I wouldn't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> well, she just said they don't have sex organs. Oh, okay. You know? And I'm like, how do you know? Well, wow. <laughs> you know, she used this verse right here. They yeah. don't reproduce. <clears throat> Matthew 22, 30. For in the resurrection, now we're talking about the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels of God in heaven. Yeah. Now he's talking about resurrected people. Right. So when we're resurrected, we are like the angels of God in heaven, so we don't marry or give in marriage. Right. And there's no procreation, because God creates whatever He wants us to have. Right. We don't have to make it ourselves. Right. Okay? Exactly. They cite this verse to say the angels couldn't have sex with women. Let's look at another set of verses, though. Also in Genesis, if you'll remember, uh, Eve's punishment was to have childbirth. Right. Pain and childbirth. Right. Pain and childbirth. So, how were we going to get children before? I suppose God could have just squeezed some dirt together and breathed on it. It went poof. Here's, here's your little child. daughter. <laughs> okay, Luke 20, verse 34. And Jesus answered and said to them, The sons of this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are counted worthy to attain that age and the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Nor can they die anymore, for they are equal to the angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. So he is naming the sons of God or angels. He's telling you that right there. And we're equal to that because in, we'll get there in a minute, in 2 Corinthians, it'll say we have been given the right to become sons of God. Okay. Or children of God. Children, yeah. These verses make it plain that we don't know if angels can procreate or not. But they will, won't need to procreate in heaven. What we do see here is that we are called the sons of God in these verses. Uh, 2 Peter 2.4 uh, For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Hell here is Tartarus. In Greek. That is the same place where the Greeks believed their demagogues went when they defeat, were defeated by Zeus. Peter used a word found nowhere else in the Bible here. So he was in Greece when he said this, so he could have just been doing the local lingo. But these demagogues are God beings mating with human women. What do you mean by God beings? God men. Or it would be like an angel mating with an earthly woman. They made the Zeus yeah, and Hercules yeah. and all these people are Made combos yeah. from the gods mating with humans. But see, you're going to find this myth yeah. in many, many places. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one of them... Uh, like the Vikings, you know. Uh, Buffalo Bill Cody wrote a book back in the 20s and he went to the I think it was the Pawnee or the uh, Pawnee probably um, started with a P but I believe it's Pawnee and they were visiting with him and conversing with him and they brought him a bone and this bone they had a medical doctor with them and he said that is a human thigh bone and it took like six men to carry it and they would have brought it back with them but they didn't have a wagon and the Indians said that these were the star people that came down and mated with the people, the women down here. And he said they could run alongside a buffalo and grab it up with one hand, tear its leg off, and eat it while it's running. That sounds like the, That's the why dinosaurs weren't big to them, because they were probably equal in size. Well, everything the Indian says is considered myth. Right? <laughs> well, that's, that's what I say. I, you know, I'm not, it's not in the Bible, so I can't teach it. I'm just saying that this myth is in more than one place. And the flood is in many, many places. So it's, it's kind of like, uh, okay, I'll call you back in about an hour. 
I look at it as, you know, propping me up rather than saying, well, everybody believes that trash, you know, or something. I'm looking at it as more evidence that it's probably true. Now, they also, they do hold their hand up when they greet you, but it's not to say how. That's movie stuff. It's to see if you got six fingers. Because they said most of these freaks had six fingers. Jude 1 6. Now, this is very important. Listen very carefully to what we're saying here. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. What I see here is they left their proper domain and left their own abode. The angels left heaven and then left their angelic body to dwell in another place. A human body does have the ability to procreate no matter if you believe in angels or do not. So let's just say, for the sake of argument here, that the things that I underline, if this is a tent, if this is a tabernacle, if this is a temple, then it's an abode. And if my spirit leaves my body, it's going to go into something else. Just like the Gadarene demoniac. Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. He was filled with a legion of demons. Jesus cast out the demons and the pigs and they went over the place. There are verses in the Bible that talk about they're looking for a place that yes. is not their own. These spirits are going around the earth looking for a place that's not their own. I should have looked that verse up and quoted it for you. Yeah. So, let's say, for instance, that angels don't have sex organs. I, I think they do. But let's just say they don't. Then they could take over a man and take his wife and make a monster. Because they made this guy do bad stuff. He broke chains that he shouldn't have been able to break. He cut, his cut himself with rocks and all kind of stuff. Now, when you read this, it says, giving themselves over to sexual immorality. Okay, well, they're the one to have a lust for the flesh. But then it says they went after strange flesh. Well, I always looked at that as homosexuals, you know. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> okay. What if their flesh was not normal? What if their flesh was altered? That's a possibility. In other words... Back to the Star Wars bar scene where all these people look different. Right. You know? Don't know. Just, I'm just throwing it out there. That's what I'm saying. That the angels had secret knowledge that the people didn't have. That's the whole point of this is saying that they had spells and, and occult and they were doing <laughs> evil things that God didn't approve of. Galatians 5.19 Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and lewdness. So, let's say this evil spirit gets into a man, the flesh. He's going to commit adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and lewdness because he's in the flesh. The, the works of the flesh are evident. He's telling you that. So, it's normal for a man to want these things. And if you've got nobody telling you no, you're going to do these things. So, the violence and the rape and the, and the thieving and the murder... And all this stuff was rampant because they had no one to stop them. Okay, Romans 8, 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So there again, we always have a choice. We always have a, a good and bad. We always have a, an opposite of, of the other. So if you're living in the Spirit, you, won't, you can't do these things. But if you live according to the flesh, you're always going to be thinking about fleshly things. Uh, once these angels took on human flesh, it is logical that they took on carnal lusts and desires. Some object to angels having bodies at all, but the Bible tells us manna was food for angels, and there are multiple Bible entries that show angels were physical beings. So there are verses in the Bible that quote that an angel stood before him, and it wasn't like a vision or anything, he was a man. You know? right. So they got to see it. 
and the manna from heaven was angel food. It was it was food for the angels. Okay, Hebrews thirteen two. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Right. And I gave a little story in my class this morning. Uh, Y'all probably already heard it, but I was in a parking lot with a black woman saying, give me some money. And I thought she was going to rob me. And I turned around and, and I didn't have any money. God had arranged it where I left my last dollar as a tip. Oh my God, you're talking to me today. Yeah, I had like five dollars. I left five dollars you know, one dollar bills. So I didn't have a, I didn't have one dollar left in my wallet. And so I, the first thing that came to my mind was I don't have any money. So yeah. I kept, I kept yeah. saying I don't have any money. And uh, the Holy Spirit started yelling. This was not some soft voice, <laughs> kind of a nudge thing. It said silver and gold have I not, but what I have I'll give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Silver and gold have I not. Over don't and over again. Tell me that yeah. before. And for years I cry every time I tell the story because I had, I was kind of a fresh Christian. I hadn't been a Christian maybe a year and a year and a half something. And oh, I thought, boy, the Lord is good. Oh, the Lord saved me. The Lord right. has really brought me along and I'm doing so good and all that. Anyway, I kept telling her. I, I even pulled my wallet out and showed her. I said, I don't have a dollar. I'm sorry. I don't have anything. Well, the other guy gave her five dollars or something, you know, and told her that don't buy beer and all that kind of stuff. She had her little Kroger cart with all the stuff in it. So, silver and gold, have I not? Silver and gold, have I not? And so I made about four or five steps. I made about four or five steps, and I told the guy, I said, I'm supposed to witness to her. It took. I was so dense to try to figure out what what I have. I will give to you, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, what do I have? I don't have a dollar. He took all my money away. Didn't have any money to give her, but what I have, right. I'll give to you. So I turned around, she was gone. Yeah. And I'm talking about hundreds of yards of asphalt Just gone. all around, and she was gone. There was no rattling of the wheels going anywhere or nothing, you know. They must look so similar to us, we may, we could be mistaken when we are in their presence. Genesis 19.5, And they called on Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. So they looked enough like men to fool these people in silence. And they wanted to know them carnally, of course, because I guess they were beautiful or whatever. Hmm. Here they definitely saw them and wanted them carnally. Uh, Jude uh, 1.7 As Sodom and Gomorrah the, and the cities around them in similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh as set forth as an example Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. This is a side rabbit trail. How many people know there's more than Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, I don't think there is. Cities that oh, were destroyed. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't know for sure. Okay. There was five, right? Well, I knew that there was more, but I don't know how many. But it was in that region. It was all in one region. Right. They're all right there together. And there in was going to be another yeah. one. In right. Lot. There was going to be another one, but Lot was too close to it. Yeah. That's right. That's so, right. Right. So that's just a little side thing that everybody talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, he blew up four cities. Most people believe strange flesh refers to homosexuality here, but the Greek word here is heteros, or uncertain, altered, or different. The Greeks already had a name for homosexuals, so there's more likely refers to something altered. The point is, if angels can appear in human form, they can have sex like men. So... That's funny because heterosexual means man and woman, which also the root word of heteros. Right. So that's kind of weird. Well, it means uncertain or altered or different. Yeah. So different would fit man and woman, oh, you know. True. So, but the point I was making here is this is a New Testament verse that talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Greek is the same thing. Strange flesh is different. In other words, you keep thinking strange flesh means, well, that's like homosexual flesh. No, it means strange, altered, or different. You know, uh, another thing to look at is how the phrase "sons of God" is treated elsewhere in Scripture. "Sons of God" comes from the Bene Ha Elohim in Hebrew. Elohim. Yeah, this phrase appears five times in the Old Testament, with two of them in Genesis six. The other three appear in Job. Uh, and I thought, to me, this is the killer. This is the nail on the head because the same phrase is used in six places, and three of them are in Job. And no one ever says in Job that these are men. 
It has to be angels. Okay? Job 1.6 Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Now each time here, Satan gets instructions to go to earth and do something. And people say, well, what's God telling Satan what to do? You know, and all this kind of stuff. He uses all his angels. Yeah. They're his creation. Job 38, 7, When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. That sentence is talking about the creation. So at the, before man was ever created, the sons of God were in heaven clapping and rejoicing when they saw the creation. So how could, how could sons of God be anything but angels? You know, some other created being up there in heaven with God. Okay? Uh, there is not now or ever has been any doubt that the three times in Job referred to angels. In Job 38, 7, if these sons were human, how would, how would they be around to shout for joy when everything was created? These sons appeared before the Lord in heaven and they did not die. Humans cannot do that. Right. And that's another thing. Always think about how could a son of God come before the Lord unless they were like angels? Because a human cannot come before the Lord. Right. They're not burn right. up and die. <clears throat> Exodus 33 20 but he said you cannot see my face for no man shall see me and live all these are the same phrases that appear in Genesis 6 but many interpret the meaning differently uh, the main argument that convinced me was figuring out how do you get to be a son of God Luke 3 38 the sons of Enos the sons of Seth the son of Adam the son of son of God so he's working backwards in the genealogy now so you have Enos Seth and Adam the son of God. So he names Adam as the son of God. Adam didn't have uh, anything but a creator. He didn't have a man. A, right. ma uh, he didn't have a mother or a father. A human right. parent. He had a, a human parent. That's a what was going parent. at. There you go. The other names were sons of men, but Adam was directly created by God. The second Adam was Jesus, created in a virgin by the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was, however, unique because he was God's only begotten son. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The word begotten means monogenous in Greek. Monos means only, solitary, or alone. Genos means offspring or kind. Jesus was the only one, uh, was the one and only begotten Son of the Father. Begat in Genesis means they were made after their own kind. A human begets a human, and a dog begets a dog, a cat begets a cat, so if God begets someone, he is as much God as the Father. We aren't told how God created angels, but we know they are created beings made by God, so they are sons of God. John 3, 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That's the key verse there. If you're born of the flesh, you're flesh. If you're born of the Spirit, you're reborn into something new. Right. Okay? This is our key verse for the topic. When Adam sinned in the garden, his spirit died, and he became human. A human man destined to die. See, before he sinned, he was not going to die. Because he was made in the image of God, and he was not going to die. God was called the tree of life. Right. Exactly. Every person since has been born of sin. Jesus was born of God and was made sinless. He was able to die as our sacrifice, sin, sacrifice sinless to pay for the sins of Adam. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. You're not the Son of Man anymore. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. For we are His workmanship, underline that, created in Christ Jesus, underline that, for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. But as many as received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in His name, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So that's the whole idea of rebirth. 
when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, he said, you have to be born again. You pay your tithe, you know the Bible, you do all these good things, you're, you're a temple person and all this kind of stuff, you're going to hell. Because you haven't been born again. Amen. So the only way to be the Son of God is to be born again. By the Spirit. In the Spirit. In the Spirit. spirit. Yeah. Um, Romans 8.14 For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So how do you get led by the Spirit? You have to have the Holy Spirit in you and you have to be born again. To be a son of God, we must be born of the Spirit, recreated in God's image, and dead to our flesh. Men, especially after the fall in the garden, cannot be sons of God without being born again of the Spirit. Seth and Enos were just men, even if they were pious men that had fallen and needed redemption. We are born dead, but can be resurrected by being reborn in the Spirit. Then we are adopted in the family of God to become sons of God. We will get back to Genesis 6 next week, but this topic needed to be covered first. Amen. Now I've got a little, I've got an extra page. <laughs> Studying the Nephilim. I didn't talk about the Nephilim too much, but just to make the point that they were a problem and that they were against God's people, the yeah. Jews. Okay. Uh, Genesis 14 5. In the 14th year of Elorimor, and the kings that were with him came and attacked the Rephaim in Ashtaroth, Karnaim, and Zuzim in Ham, in Ham and the Emim in Shava Kirkathim. These are the tough ones. These are the ones where you say hard word after hard word. But now the Rephaim is another word used for a tribe of giants. So there, there were the sons of Anak, which I didn't look up any of the. I only picked out a few verses to make a point. But there were several tribes of giants in the land. Where were they? In Israel. The land of Israel, in that area. Now, Saul was told to go attack these people, kill every man, woman, and child, dog, horse, everything. Like, just like a flood. He wanted everything that they had touched dead. And see, there's a lot of non-believers that say, well, you have a genocidal God. I'm not serving somebody that kills women and children and stuff. Well, these were strange flesh. They were messed up. So Saul was instructed to do this, and he didn't do it. So it, was, it spread afterwards. The ones that were left that weren't destroyed, where are they today? Location-wise. I can't answer that. Gaza Strip, the West Bank, the Golan Heights. The ones that give Israel trouble today, the Gaza Strip, West Bank, and Golan Heights. That's where they left them alive. They didn't kill all of them. They killed as many as they could, but they didn't kill all of them. Okay? Genesis 15, what? Yeah, 1, one through, 20. through 20. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram, this is before Abraham, so it's early. In a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? And there, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Eliezer was his servant, wasn't even his own family. Okay. Then Abram said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born of my house is, is my heir. Uh, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now towards heaven and count the stars, if you're able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. That's how you get to be righteous, to believe the Lord. So... Everybody says, well, what do I got to do? I said, just trust the Lord. But right. Believe the Lord and you're righteous. Okay. <clears throat> then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of the Ur of the Chaldean, Chaldeans. Now, if y'all were here in my earlier studies, you know the Chaldeans was the land of right. demons. To give you this land to inherit. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit? 
And he said, Lord God, how shall I know if, that I will inherit it? So he, gave, he said to him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, and a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these to him and cut them in two down the middle and placed each piece opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and they will serve them, and they will afflict them 400 years. So he has given him a prophecy that they're going to Egypt. Okay. The slaves out there then. Right. This is early on. This is before Abraham became Abraham. He was Abram then. Yeah. This is the the covenant he was making with him. He took these animals and cut them in half. And you're supposed to walk down between them and all this kind of stuff. God did it. He did. It. In other words, this was the covenant he was making with Abram, and Abraham didn't have to do anything because he counted him righteous. So God did this for himself. And also the nation whom they serve I will judge. Afterwards they will come out with great possessions. So he's talking about the Jews now will come out with great possessions. Now as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. So he's telling them now you're going to die. Right. But he said you're going to live a long time. I'm going to be good to you. But in the fourth generation they shall return here for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. The Amorites lived in Canaan. Okay? And it came to pass, when the sun went down and it was dark, that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between these those pieces. I believe that's the Holy Spirit. Came down and, and God is a fire. Unquenchable fire. Uh, on the same day that Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying... To your descendants I have given this land from the river of the e Egypt, that's the Nile, to the great river, the river Euphrates. That's Iraq. Israel is a whole lot bigger than what it is today. The Kenites and the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Rephaim, remember we talked about that, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. I'm so glad I didn't have to read that. <laughs> okay. The point is, all of these people live in Canaan and they're all spoiled meat. These, All of these ites had to die. And he's telling them that I'm going to give you this land and actually God goes before them into battle so they're not going to lose. I just wanted to show you, we don't teach it this way. But all of these names here were corrupted people. These were part of the Nephilim tribes. Mm -hmm. Now he's telling Abram that for 400 years he's going to be in Egypt. You think Satan's not listening and saying, I'm going to go over here and start building landmines for Canaan, the Canaan land. This is why when they came up to Canaan and sent the spies into Canaan land, they came back and said we were grasshoppers in their eyes. After 400 years, there's a lot of breeding going on. They took one stem of grapes between two men on a pole. That's how big the grapes were. And of course, one of the things that we don't realize, there's a, there's a mystery, a scientific mystery with unbelievers. They cannot figure out how the Egyptians built the pyramids and all these big stones 20 to 30 ton stones and stuff well one of these guys just picks it up and stacks it up there. all this living in this area that he's going to give Abraham is infected with these people doing a study on the Canaanites is interesting and if you you know if you go to Leviticus eighteen twenty six I think it is it talks about okay I'm going to give you this land he's talking to Moses I think yeah Moses and he says I'm going to give you this land he's talking about the Canaan land he said but if you 
But he talks about bestiality and homosexuals. He said, now, if you do this yourself, I'm going to kick you out. Because I'm kicking them out because they did it. So all this stuff fits together. We start seeing that these guys are evil constantly. That's all they do. And they, they infected the promised land and God had to boot them out. Now, let's go back over here. In the valley of Rephaim, in Israel, there are stones stacked in a circle that are huge 20 to 30 ton stones in concentric circles that may have been some sort of a temple. They don't know what it is. But you, you read through the Bible a lot and it talks about the valley of Rephaim. And it's full of artifacts that, like I said, there's boulders as big as that table. Six foot high, six foot square, you know, rectangular ones. Well, they've got a circle. You can see it from the air, but it's stacked up stones in a concentric circles. Looks like a target, sort of. And the only thing I can figure out, maybe it's some kind of a temple or something. They don't know what it is, but it's huge stones. Numbers 21, 33. And they turned and went up by the way to Bashan. So Og, king of Bashan, went out against them, he and all his people, to battle at Endrai. So who is the Og, the king of Bashan? He's a giant. Deuteronomy 1.4 After he had killed Sihon, another one, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon. 1, four. Deuteronomy 1.4 one four. Yeah. Thank you. And Og, king of Bashan, who dwelt at Ashtaroth and Indra. So, Sihon was a king of the Amorites, and Og was the king of Bashan, who dwelt in Ashtaroth. Anybody knows anything about the Bible? Ashtaroth is bad. This is a, 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 a it's like Baal. Let's see, Deuteronomy 3 3. So the Lord our God also delivered into our hands Og, king of Bashan with all his people, and we attacked him until he had no survivors remaining. Okay, that's Deuteronomy 3.3. Deuteronomy 3.11. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. Indeed, his bedstead was an iron bedstead. Um, is it not in Rabbah of the people of Ammon? Nine cubits. So nine times 18 inches, nine and a half would be four and a half feet, nine, 13 and a half feet, his bed would be approximately. And uh, in length, and four cubits in its width, so that's six feet wide, according to the standard cubit. Deuteronomy 3.13, the rest of Gilead and all of Bashan, the king of Og, I gave to half the tribe of Manasseh. All the region of Argob with all the, all Bashan was called the land of the giants. So there again, they, they're, get, they're divvying up the land now. But now they're telling you that Bashan was the land of the giants. Okay, Joshua 12, 4. The other king was Og, king of Bashan, and his territory who was of the remnant of the giants who dwelt at Ashtaroth and at Erdri. Now listen to this. Psalm twenty two twelve, Jesus, King David had visions. The Holy Spirit gave him visions, and he wrote it down. And what it was was Jesus on the cross and his thoughts. And he would he would um, in several verses he would give what Jesus was thinking while he was on the cross. And this is one of them. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan, Bashan have encircled me. What are the bulls of Bashan? They're beasts of Bashan. I, I believe that he was talking in the spiritual sense that the demons of Bashan encircled him while he was hung on the cross. They were making fun of him or watching him die. Yeah, in the spiritual world, they would have been. See, the only ones at the cross were the Romans and a few Jews. Okay? But he's looking in the spirit world yeah. and we're going back to Og and Bashan, the king of the giants there, which I believe are evil spirits. 
and he says many bulls they were, they were famous for their bulls but when you're talking about wild beasts you're usually talking about demons and spiritually speaking have many bulls have surrounded me strong bulls of <coughs> Have why? Yeah. Why would he say that if, if it wasn't a spiritual yeah. observation? The whole purpose of this is to show you that the done? sons of God going into the daughters of, of men caused corruption of the flesh mm -hmm. to a point where God killed everybody. He did his best to get rid of it. Now, as I said back, I think it's in, in Genesis six three or four it says and after that so the flood didn't get them all right and i believe that possibly noah's wife her flesh had been. nama was the sister of tubal cain right. remember tubal cain was not a nice guy he made weapons right. to murder people with okay well that was his sister we don't know that the that the sons of god started in six one Right. It could have been back in 426. So I believe that when I said all flesh, Noah was the last seed that wasn't corrupted. He was the same was seed the, to go on to fulfill. He Jesus was the only was one yeah. that hadn't been corrupted. That's true. Very good. And Nama was it? The Jews believed that, that Nama was his wife, and that's, and that's the, the sister the of Tubal Right. The seed alive. Right. That's what it's about. The seed is of the male. So the only way that we can look at this is that uh, Seth and Japheth and, and, uh, and to Ham keep the seed alive, he needed were a woman. dirty. 